Well, good morning, and I will add my welcome to WindPower 2018. It is great to have all of you here. First thing I would like to do is ask for your help if we can please thank Tristan as outgoing chair and Steve Lockhart as incoming chair for their commitment and passion for what we're doing. They are doing extraordinary work. Both of them talked about the exciting momentum that we have in the wind industry, how we are affordable, we are reliable, we are mainstream, and don't forget, we are clean. To reinforce those points, I want to add just a couple of anecdotes to share with you. On cost, Excel in Colorado this past winter released an RFP for new wind generation. Wind energy beat every other generation source by a large margin with a median price of $18 per megawatt hour. Wow, that is affordable. On reliability, there are now four states that are producing over 30% of all of their electricity with wind energy. And there are 14 states that are producing 10% of all their electric needs with wind energy. Periods of time this last year in Texas, for periods of time, over 50% of all the electricity they needed we provided. In SPP, over 60% of their needs for a period of time we provided. In Colorado, over 65% of what they needed we provided. We are reliably on the grid. And on size, scale, we now have 89,000 megawatts of spinning turbines out there. We have 33,000 additional megawatts in the pipeline coming on in the next two years or next few years, and that is a 40% increase over last year. And in addition to that, we have another 13,000 megawatts of offshore wind that's going to be coming on by 2030. Wow, we are big, we are mainstream, so we are undeniably affordable, reliable, mainstream, and clean. Now, people have also accurately observed that the phase down of the PTC may be fueling a significant part of this momentum. And that's fair. Accordingly, there kind of is the question of, as that phases down, will there be a potential slowdown, and what are we going to do about it as we get into the 2020s? Well, with Wrigley Field a bit down the street, let me use a baseball analogy. Yes, that PTC phase down, that was a home run. That was a big deal for this industry and is a big deal for us. But we are a mainstream energy source now. We're not just a niche player, a slugger, swinging for the fences at every pitch. As a mainstream energy source, what we need to do going forward and what AWEA's strategic plan calls for is a sustained rally of singles and doubles. What we need is a sustained rally of singles and doubles. Getting that sustained rally will get us more runs at lower risk than just swinging for the fences at every pitch. Now, more specifically, to get that steady progress of singles and doubles on the commercial side, we absolutely need productivity improvements, technological advances, and cost reductions. We, know we need those commercial singles and doubles. And we also need policies throughout the country that level the playing field. We need market designs where we can compete in each RTO. We need RPSs and carbon policies that fully value the benefits of wind energy. We need transmission both inter- and intra-regional transmission. We as an industry need to be producing more best practices, publishing so we can improve our efficiency. We need to keep training, improving the training for our employees. We need streamlined regulatory processes and we need improved safety programs. A sustained rally of this, these types of commercial and policy singles and doubles in the next few years is how we are going to continue our momentum through the 2020s. But, and this is important, to do that, we can't just have one or two sluggers. We just can't have a couple of niche players. We need a really deep bench. We need a strong lineup. And that's where all of you come in. We need an industry, yes, that's doing all of our day jobs and 
an industry that is telling the American public about the benefits of wind energy and doing that every day. Now, there are two fundamental strategies for telling wind stories, wind's benefits. First, you need people involved. Just three weeks ago, I met Pat Nava Woods in Santa Fe, New Mexico, when we were releasing our 2017 annual market report. Pat is a state senator, Ava, his wife. They were there as we did the release, and then a WIA staff joined them to head out to Broadview, New Mexico, where Pat and Ava actually had recruited Pattern Energy a couple of years ago to build a 300 megawatt Broadview wind farm. Now, you and I can geek out all day about the technical benefits of wind on the grid, but nobody can tell a story like Pat and Ava. They will tell you how that wind farm enabled their daughter and son-in-law, and most importantly, their grandkids, to move back to the ranch, to continue their family's legacy of living and working that ranch. It was wind energy that financially made that possible for them to come back. Ranch by ranch, manufacturer by manufacturer, we are improving people's lives. But the other thing you need in telling these stories is a venue. You need a place and time for doing it. Now, the wind industry last year launched this thing called American Wind Week. This year, we're doing American Wind Week August 5th through 11th. But what we need, what I ask of all of you, we need every single company in this industry to do something during August 5th through 11th American Wind Week. If you have wind farms, open them up. Have a wind farm tour. If you have a manufacturing facility, have the adjacent community come in and check it out. If you don't have either of those, have your employees run a social media campaign to talk about the benefits of wind energy for them. Whatever appropriate a way for you, figure out a way to get involved in American Wind Week. And you can learn how to do this on AmericanWindWeek.org. That's where you can go sign up and find out how to get involved. Examples of ways that people are already committed to American Wind Week. Avant Grid Renewables and EDPR are going to give a We as Wind Champion Awards at the Wind Farm to key champions from Congress. Blattner Energy and Anderson Trucking are going to open up their offices and have state legislators come in and meet their staff. Blattner is going to hold a barbecue and festival in Broadview, New Mexico. Now, Broadview, there are less than 500 people there. If they can have a festival, every community throughout this country that's near a wind farm or a manufacturing facility can do something for American Wind Week. So in closing, we have tremendous momentum in this industry. We've got the bases loaded. What we need is sustained singles and doubles, and we need your involvement, yes, in your day job, and also with and through American Wind Week. I look forward to seeing all of you throughout this country doing something during American Wind Week. I look forward to enjoying, hopefully, a very productive Wind Power 2018. Ladies and gentlemen, onward together. Thank you.